Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Brett Morgan and Louise Ellis? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll go through the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Brad Morgan was raised in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. He married and divorced twice. Both relationships ended because Brett was aggressive and engaged in domestic violence. Brett had many run-ins with the law and racked up several charges, including forgery, theft, and possession of stolen property. On November 3, 1978, Brett Morgan would get involved in another crime, but this one came with more severe consequences. He strangled a 21-year-old sex worker in a hotel room. Brett was convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to only 10 years in prison. The police believe that Brett was also responsible for two unsolved homicides in the 1970s. Both of the victims were women. Brett was never charged with these murders. In 1993, a freelance journalist and writer named Louise Ellis was covering a homicide case that involved a miscarriage of justice. A man named David Milgard was falsely convicted of the murder of a nursing student named Gail Miller. The actual killer was a man named Larry Fisher, who had been Brett Morgan's cellmate. Brett went to court and testified against Larry. Louise was in court that day and was impressed that Brett would be willing to testify. She was moved by his commitment to justice and wanted to make contact with him, but there was one small obstacle. Brett was incarcerated at the time. Even though his manslaughter conviction only brought him 10 years in prison starting in 1978, Brett found other ways to get in trouble. He was now in prison for robbery and fraud. Louise started writing letters to Brett in prison, and they developed a romantic relationship. When he was released from prison, Brett moved in with Louise. She lived in Ottawa, the capital of Canada. Louise was confident that Brett could be reformed. She believed that with her help, he would never be violent again. It didn't take long for Louise to realize that she may have made a mistake in selecting a killer as a lover. After just two months of living together, Louise recorded stories in her diary about Brett punching a hole through a door and pouring beer over her head. In January 1995, Brett moved into another residence. During this same month, he forged a check for $7,000. It was drawn on Louise's personal line of credit. The next month, he forged another check for $5,400. Brett didn't last too long at his new residence. He was in a unit located in a basement. The upstairs unit was burglarized. As the prime suspect, Brett was asked to leave. He moved back in with Louise, saying that he would be out by May 1, 1995. Louise was not able to admit that Brett had forged the two checks. In addition, she loaned him $20,000. She regularly checked with the bank to see if he had repaid the money, but he never did. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On April 22, 1995, Louise was planning on spending the night at her ex-boyfriend's residence. His name was John Masonov. She was going to celebrate the birthday of John's daughter. Louise actually had left John in order to be with Brett, so John was dumped for a killer. That probably wasn't too good for John's self-esteem. Before Louise could execute her plan, Brett Morgan attacked her in the bathroom of her residence and strangled her. He wrapped her in a shower curtain and placed her body in her own vehicle. He drove to an area of the Gatineau Hills in Quebec, which was near John's home, and disposed of her body in the woods. It appears as though Brett was trying to frame John for the murder. After this, Brett abandoned the vehicle a few miles away. The next day, April 23, John called Brett and said that Louise never arrived. Brett reported Louise missing to the police. A friend of Louise found her vehicle on April 24. Investigators could not find anything mechanically wrong with the vehicle. It appeared to be in good operating condition and was sufficiently fueled. Inside the vehicle, they found Louise's overnight bag and purse. Her bank card was in the purse. Brett tried to make it seem as though he was distraught about the disappearance of Louise. 
He organized search efforts and gave interviews to the media pleading for her safe return. About a month later, Brett attempted to access his lover's estate. The police came to believe that Brett murdered Louise, especially after they were able to clear John Mazanoff as a potential suspect. John was with his daughter around the time Louise disappeared. In addition to Brett being a convicted killer, which of course made him look guilty, he made one significant mistake that the police discovered. Brett told the police that Louise left for John's residence at 1.15 p.m. on April 22. In her vehicle, the police found her bank card. Yet that same card was used at 2.53 p.m. to withdraw $280 from Louise's account. A video surveillance camera captured the person who made the withdrawal. It was Brett Morgan. Brett also had a new shower curtain in his bathroom, which was incorrectly installed. He claimed the old shower curtain was destroyed in a cleaning accident. Despite believing that Brett was guilty, the police did not have enough evidence against him. They could have arrested him, but they would have been taking their chances as far as getting a conviction. Investigators really wanted to find Louise's body, but all the search efforts had failed. As it turns out, the police would get a break in the form of a woman named Marie Parent. She was studying to be a private investigator and took an interest in the disappearance of Louise Ellis. She offered her services to Brett Morgan. This was completely independent of any actions taken by the police. Over time, Marie started to believe that Brett was the killer. There were a few inconsistencies in his story, and on one particular occasion, Brett appeared to reveal something accidentally while he was speaking about the case. Marie had asked Brett about the position of the driver's seat in Louise's vehicle, like, was it pushed back all the way for a taller driver? Brett said, it was exactly the way I left. Then he paused for a moment and said, it was exactly the way Louise left it. The police had planted recording devices in Brett's home, and they knew that he was talking to Marie. They approached her and asked her to help them to catch Brett. Marie agreed to cooperate with the authorities. Here was the plan that the police and Marie implemented. Marie told Brett that they needed to find his lover's body. She went along with this idea that John Mazanoff could have been responsible. Again, Brett attempted to frame John for the murder, so he was a big fan of this theory. Brett didn't know that the police had already cleared John as a potential suspect. Marie asked Brett to think like John may have been thinking. Where would John have hidden the body if he was actually the killer? This was an obvious trap, but Brett could not resist an opportunity to impress Marie. He came up with a theory about where the body could be. Brett and Marie went to the Gatineau Hills to search for the body. Brett did not know that the police had two surveillance teams watching Marie. They were quite concerned that Brett might try to murder her, mostly because Brett had a reputation for strangulation. After going to a wooded area and looking around, Brett refused to search anymore. He may have become alerted to the presence of the police because they flew a helicopter over the woods. The police then tried a different tactic. Louise was technically Brett's common-law wife, which meant that Brett was entitled to her estate. He was having severe financial problems. He had been taking her personal property to the pawn shop to get money. The police had the bank tell Brett that he would not be able to get his hands on the estate until the body of Louise was recovered. Essentially, they were saying that they needed proof that she was dead. In addition to this tactic, the police had Marie talk to Brett, she had a meal with him at a restaurant and told him that the police were focusing on John. They were getting closer to making an arrest, but they just needed to find the body. Brett saw this as his chance to ensure the blame for the murder rested on John and to get the money from Louise's estate. Everything would go Brett's way if he could just get the body. At least this is what he believed. During this time at the restaurant, Brett made a romantic advance on Marie she pretended to go along with it and allowed him to kiss her four or five times. Marie would later indicate that she became nauseated, or as Brett Morgan might call it, a standard date for him. This was a reaction with which Brett, the vomit-inducing villain, was pretty familiar. Brett agreed to search for the body again. Brett and Marie went out on July 7, 1995, to conduct their second search. 
Once again, they went into a wooded area in the Gatineau Hills. Brett led Marie within a few feet of the body, and Marie saw it. A few hours later, Brett reported the location of Louise's body to the police. He was arrested for murder on the spot. In March 1998, Brett Morgan was convicted of first-degree murder. He was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. Brett would only serve two months of his sentence. His attorney did not free him from prison. Hepatitis C did. Brett escaped his sentence by dying. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Louise had a fairly successful career as a writer, journalist, and illustrator. She wanted to help people and had a particular interest in assisting those involved in the criminal justice system. When she saw Brett testifying in order to free an innocent man, she was overwhelmed with feelings of attraction. She falsely believed that Brett's testimony proved that he had been rehabilitated, or at least could be. After starting a romantic relationship with Brett, Louise knew that she made a mistake, but she could not admit some of Brett's shortcomings, like when he forged the checks. She continued to give him the benefit of the doubt, but she was in denial. It was obvious that Brett was dangerous. In some of the cases where male violent offenders in prison were able to attract women, the women had limited romantic options for various reasons. For example, they may have been considered unattractive. In the case of Louise, however, she was considered attractive and had many different romantic options. She actually left a man to be with Brett. It appears as though Louise was very focused on the idea that she could change Brett. He was bad and she could make him good. In reality, She only supplied him with another easy target to extend his criminal history. Item number two, some people believe that Brett Morgan was psychopathic. This certainly seems like a possibility. Brett had a long criminal history, possessed a superficial charm, and had no empathy or remorse. He was impulsive, irresponsible, sadistic, deceptive, had a parasitic lifestyle, and was grandiose. Brett was very manipulative and calculating. For example, He made an extensive effort to frame John as the killer, and he feigned emotions to make it appear as though he was upset about the disappearance of Louise. Item number three, what do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Louise Ellis was enthralled by the drama of the criminal justice system. She romanticized violent offenders as misunderstood victims who just needed someone to love them in order to be completely reformed. When Louise encountered Brett, she was overwhelmed with his superficial charm. She could have seen right through him, but her own irrational belief about criminals was blocking her view. It did not take long for Brett to resume his pattern of domestic violence, which jeopardized the relationship. On April 22, 1995, Louise had a conversation with her ex-boyfriend John and told Brett that she was going to spend the night at his residence. At this point, Brett had two possible motives to commit murder. One motive was jealousy, and the other motive was money. Perhaps Brett saw an easy opportunity to frame John for murder and collect the estate of Louise. Perhaps both motives played into Brett's decision, but either way, he strangled Louise in the shower and disposed of her body. When Marie Parent started helping Brett to find the body, Brett fell back into a pattern of trying to manipulate women. However, this time, he was the one who was manipulated. Marie risked her own life in order to ensure Brett would be held accountable. Now moving to my final thoughts. Women who date former violent offenders often learn why their lovers were in prison in the first place. There's nothing wrong with trying to rehabilitate prisoners, but it's something that should be done outside of a romantic relationship. There's nothing special about romance as far as fixing violent tendencies. A person cannot be loved into pro-social behavior, but love can certainly be a motive for a violent person to reoffend. Those are my thoughts on the case of Brett Morgan and Louise Ellis. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.